Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. This is your host, the Barkey, bringing you podcast 42 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. And, uh, you know, happy holidays and happy new year, everybody. Um, I'm back here with my good buddy Raptor via Skype today. How are you doing, Raptor? Yeah, I'm doing pretty great. North Carolina is a lot warmer than Montana, and it's been amazing. Don't remind me. It's been like in the negative teens out here for a while. <laughs> you know, it's funny. You say, you know, you, you always make sure to mention that we're presented by Hirotaku, but now we're literally presented by them. <laughs> yes, yes. and uh, But anyways, yes. it's good to be back. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so, Raptor, you know, here's what we have decided to go ahead and do. Um, you know, it's probably been out on a couple of sites for some time now. Uh, but there is a preliminary uh, listing of Super Mega Force episodes and episode descriptions, or at least for the first 15 episodes uh, and the final episode, The Legendary War. Uh, yeah, with about four in between that th- th- we know nothing about yet. Absolutely. So we thought it would be a fun little activity here to go over the speculation, basically. Uh, just take a look at the names of the episodes, the descriptions, and just kind of give our overall uh, thoughts on, you know, does this sound like a good episode? How does this compare to the Gokaiger episode? And where does this fit in, I guess, with Power Rangers as a whole? And Raptor, before we start, we do need to let everybody know that these are rumors at the moment. They seem rather legitimate given the information that we have, but nothing... It is... Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, I was going to say, this is the guy who... It's from the same person that leaked the episode titles and descriptions for Megaforce, yep. and there was nothing, you know, nothing that was wrong. Okay. Well, I mean, wherever the source is, I just want to make sure our viewers out there know that, you know, nothing's official with Super Megaforce yet. That doesn't premiere for at least another two months at the moment, but we're going to get a head start on it regardless. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So... You know, I'm going to go ahead and read out the titles, Raptor, and the descriptions. You tell me what you think, and I'll go, and we'll keep going until we get to the final one. Also, we're going to be consulting a post by by Lavender Ranger on his blog, Henshin Grid, because he's gone through the descriptions and matched up which episode of Gokaiger he thinks each episode is based off of absolutely it's going to be likely that his information uh is accurate uh based on the descriptions so uh yeah all power to lavender ranger and i I hope he's right on a lot of these because they make a lot of sense when you think about them yeah all right so take it away all right so episode one of power rangers super mega force is super mega (laughs) force Uh, and the episode description is Gose presents the Rangers with new morphers that unlock a super mega mode, which will allow them to access the powers of every previous team of Power Rangers. Uh, so that's the general setup. You know, Raptor, just what are your thoughts after hearing that exactly? My immediate thought is there better be a damn good explanation, but I wonder if there's even going to be one. Yeah, that's something I'm I'm really uh, concerned about is that it seems um, that it's a super mega mode, uh, at least in this description, and a lot of indications suggest that it is an alternate mode and not the default setting, if you will. Uh, the toys would counter that, I guess, since we're seeing all these the the pirate the the Gokai stuff and all that. Um, but I would really like to know how do you go from what appears to be mystical angel powers to pirate-based uh, powers, technology-based. Well, first of all, let me point out that most of the angel stuff was stripped out. Ab- yes, the powers mm-hmm. are the powers are mystical. Yep, but not angelic. Yeah, but I am willing to believe that there is a little bit of magic or supernatural stuff in there which which is simply my biggest thing because it's like linkara made a good point with the zeo the turbo transition a mystical crystal to cars and that seems to be the same thing they're doing right here and judging by the toy names that the pirate thing is going to be completely glossed over 
Now, there's been set pictures which involve the Gokai Galleon, mm-hmm. but they call it the Legendary Megazord. They don't call it the Galleon Megazord or the Pirate Megazord or whatever. Yeah. It's the Legendary Megazord, but still, you're going to have to deal with the fact that the pieces of, one of the pieces of the ship is a big schooner. Yeah, and I think that it, they've made this problematic. I mean, based on... Now, I have not finished all my V-logs on Megaforce yet, so I don't know of all the specific plot details that are going on Megaforce right now. However, I am aware that the ending to Megaforce is pretty much, you know, the, the fleet arrives and, you know, the rangers go to go ahead and confront it. Um, it would seem to me that it's basically going to be the same as uh, the first episode of Gokai, you know, you have the battle... Um, you know, I don't know if it's going to be like the big battle with all the Rangers because that does seem to be the final episode. Maybe it's just them and they lose. You would think they would lose their powers in this as opposed to get an alternate mode. But whatever happens, they're obviously going to unlock the new powers and new modes. Those keys are going to be available. And it's just going to be like a rehash of Gokai or Episode 1 where we get to see the Megazord in action and them fight with their new powers. And I do find odd that it is going to be a one-parter that this is something that obviously should take up two parts. Right. And, you know, it's it's entirely possible, and I'll have you share this in a bit, but it's entirely possible that it is essentially a two-parter with the second episode description. So why don't you go ahead and read that? Okay, the second episode description is Earth Fights Back. Uh, and it goes, while the rest of the team works with their with the civilians to rebuild their city, Troy stumbles on a plot uh, by the Armada to launch missiles at major cities throughout the world. Okay. So it doesn't um, necessarily seem like it's a second part, more of a picking up where the first episode left off and the consequences in that episode. Although... There's something here that I like that sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. We'll see how well it gets utilized. Okay. While the rest of the team works with the civilians to rebuild the city. That was something that was completely glossed over in Gokaiger. The fact that this was supposedly the most dangerous alien invasion that ever happened in the Sentai world. Mm -hmm. But it's like nothing happened. Gokai just show up to a completely pristine Earth. Well, well keep in mind that Episode 1, uh, the events of the Gokai... Five years, just, I know, oh, I know. Yeah, five years. It, t- it took a, a, a while for them to go ahead and come back. Yeah, but I, I do like the idea that there's going to be some damage done and that, yeah, they have, to, they have to rebuild a bit. And that's cool. That's a cool idea. I, I, I just... You know, I worry because I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think I'm going to be giving this series a lot of credit from what I've seen from Mega Force and what we've seen from Samurai, basically this uh, new Saban era and everything. To me, when it says works with the civilians to rebuild the city, that seems to me uh, to be code for they learn a lesson about the civilians and the how, what the Power Rangers mean to them or, or something like that. Because I, I don't necessarily see this like. Um, cleaning up after Armageddon and all that kind of stuff. It just seems to me that they're going to do stuff and they're going to learn something from it, something that should be a duh kind of moment, I guess. Nice little teamwork lesson, I guess. That would be my thought, because, again, I'm not really giving these guys a lot of credit from the track record so far. I hope I'm 100% wrong. I really do. But just thinking about it right now, that would be the, the likely way they would go. Yeah, and so we'll see. I mean, it doesn't sound like this one's spectacular. I mean, but yeah, whatever. We'll see. Uh, now, episode three, uh, Blue Saber Saga, uh, which reads: After being humiliated in battle by a master swordsman monster, Noah suffers a crisis of confidence and questions his worthiness as a ranger. Uh, now, Raptor, uh, according to the Lavender Ranger, this is obviously based on episode four of Go Kyger, where Joe, uh, you know, does that six sword uh, slash thing. Okay. Yeah. 
Now, I just want to quickly say, this is where I'm going to have another problem, I think, with the adaptation, particularly bringing over <clears throat> the characters from Megaforce to Super Megaforce. Because we know the Ghost say Blue, his primary weapon is a blaster weapon. And Joe from Go Kiger, his primary weapon is double swords. Yeah, he, yeah. more so than any other Go Kiger, sticks to his swords. Yes. Now, what bothers me here is what's going to be the mismatch of footage. Because you have the character of Noah in a suit and the Go Sager footage of a blaster marksman, if you will, to a accomplished sword user in Super Mega Force. And and that really bothers me. That obviously it's going to be the same plot borrowed over and they're giving the plot to a character who has not established any swordsman skill uh, unless I'm missing something in a Mega Force episode I haven't uh, gotten to. No, you're not. So it it just seems to me that and, you know, they knew this was coming. They knew they were going to do this. So I just wonder why they didn't really establish him uh, as a swordsman at any point, you know? You know, maybe it'll be established in one of the first two episodes. Maybe there'll be maybe there'll be scenes of them practicing mm-hmm. with the Gokai Sabres. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's possible. But, yeah, I, maybe I'm being a bit too optimistic here. Yeah, I mean, I I would like to think that they explain it somehow, but again, the problem here is you're taking two different sources um, and and trying to put a character that you've created that doesn't fit neither of those roles because neither Hyde nor Joe was anything like Noah. Noah's completely different from either of those characters, and so they're really trying to force this in there as opposed to either creating a new character, making a separate season, uh, or really establish some things with those characters in the previous season because i don't think you can go to the third episode uh saying well he used the blaster last season but hey now he can use swords like the like the best of them and and i just find that you know who you know who joe would have been a good fit for though um don gokai green that would have been an easy transition (laughs) oh you mean you mean noah for gokai green gokai green yeah yeah, but the problem there is, uh, of course, they would never cast Noah as the Black Mega Force Ranger. But I don't know. Yeah, but for those of you who may not have seen Gokaiger, Gokai Green, well, he was the you know in the classic Green Ranger mold. He's an inept bungler. Yeah, and, and you know that fits Noah and Jake Which a is, bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here's gonna be something. Jake, who is, who is very athletically and physically talented is suddenly going to be in fights stumbling around and you know go kai green's accident foo that's what i call his fighting style yes so yeah you want to talk about bad character transitions well there's one that's going to bother you more well, I'll give him a little bit of credit right here. The one person that seems to transfer almost effortlessly over uh, would be Gia, when you think about it. Her and Luca. Okay, so moving to the next episode that we have here. Um, oh, and s- sorry for the abrupt cutoff, people. Had some technical difficulties. Still figuring a new system out. Yeah, sorry for that, everybody. Uh, the The next episode that we have here is a Lions Alliance uh, determined to strengthen their defenses against the Armada. The Rangers head to a mysterious airborne island named Animaria in search of the wild yet powerful Red Lion Zord. Uh, now, of course, this is obviously based off of the Gokhydra episode. I believe it was episode 9 where they go to the Animarian to... You know, get the the, the Gowl Lion. Um, Raptor, what are your initial thoughts uh, after hearing this? Because it sounds to me like it's going to be a direct clone. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a direct clone. I have a feeling that there... I think that if there was going to be a cameo, that the episode description would mention it. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's the one thing about these episode descriptions is they don't necessarily list that many cameos. There are a couple in here that we will uh, mention. Um, I don't think there is going to be a cameo. I mean, when you... I think that... When you can... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. 
I mean, when you consider that that Cole came back to play Decker, um, possibly he might be involved with it. But that's been so long ago now that you know he he might not be in New Zealand or available anymore. Yeah, but clearly he still has a working relationship with Savan, so it's still possible. And I would hope there's some kind of Wild Force character, even if it's just a suited character. Just because, I mean, refresh me on my memory. What what did they run up run into when they were up there before they encountered Galion in Gokaiju? Uh, nothing actually. The uh, f- the the the, the Zanyak, they attacked uh, up there and they fought them as the Turbo Rangers, and then the Lion, uh, Gal Lion showed up, and I believe Gal Lion knocked all of them off the island. Uh, if I recall correctly, that's all that happened. Oh, yeah, and they used the Jetman powers to save themselves. Yeah, to, to fly on down, and then they eventually ran into uh, Gal Red. All right, yeah, there still could be a cameo from Cole. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it'll be cool to see the Animarium again. It'll be cool to see the Red Lion Sword, but or the Red Wild Sword, so... And, and, you know, I'm going to make the same complaint I did with uh, Gokaiger and uh, the Zords there. Uh, there's got to be a reason somewhere um, why the Red Lion Zord is a different design, why it's larger, and how it can merge with the, the Gokai, uh, or excuse me, the Super Mega Force uh, Zord line. Um, the legendary Mega Zord. That's what it's called. Exactly. Um, they, they really need to be able to explain why. Um, not to mention, why are they going to the Animarium? Because if you recall, uh, the only reason that the Gokaiger went there was because Navi sent them there. Uh, they were looking for the Flying Island. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the, the description here is they just want to strengthen their defenses. So they're just going for some random Zord. And, Gose, yeah. What I'm guessing is that Gose is going to say, you know, there's a great power on the Animarium. It'll be useful. Go get it. Yeah, and again, they're probably not going to think this thing through, but I I think we're going to kind of expect that. Yeah, and maybe we'll get a cameo, but it. I'm looking forward to seeing the seeing the Lions Zord again. So, whatever. Yeah, it'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, Now the next episode, a little bit more clear as far as what's going on. Uh, called Samurai Surprise. I'll give you one guess as to what season this is referencing. <laughs> uh, when a powerful monster named Matacor is sent by the Emperor to take on the Rangers, they face a challenge like never before. Luckily, help comes in the form of a mysterious samurai visitor. Uh, now, it, go ahead. You go first. Uh, say, sounds like there's a samurai ranger inbound. Uh, a- absolutely. Now, the question is who, because Lavender Ranger points out that it might be Jaden, but in Gokaiger, it was uh, the princess, the, f- the female Shinken Red, uh, the-, the guest starred in those episodes. Uh, so do you think we're going to get Lauren or Jaden? I think that it's probably going to be Jaden, because apparently there's... I mean, I'll have to look up on this, but I think there's been rumors that he indeed is supposed to make a cameo. Yeah, and, and I think that's what Lavender Ranger is going off on. So obviously that episode's not going to focus too much on uh, the Sentai episode, I guess. But then again, the characters of Lauren and the princess are two completely different for them to really even base the episode uh, off of that. And really, you can just... I mean, you can just... And she didn't even transform in the episode, did she? Uh, no, she did not. So you don't even have to worry about the Sentai footage in that episode. Yeah. Just have Jaden show up and, you know, maybe even they shot some American footage to where he does where he does transform just for a little team-up action. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it's probably going to be a, a team-up. I mean, it, it sounds like... No, it not, a, make... not a full-on team-up. Well, but... yeah, I'm thinking team-up in, like, Clash of the Red Rangers uh, team-up. But... I, I'm thinking what will happen is is there. It seems like they're going to do the, the Gokai route. Like they're not going to have their powers, but they're going to be there basically. 
uh, to give them some sort of encouragement, some sort of uh, message, which worked, which worked well in Gokaiger, but depending on what the explanation is for, for the powers and how they get them and so forth, uh, I think that's going to play a role in whether or not we see morphed rangers. Yeah, and... But yeah, it'll be cool to see Jaden again, if it is Jaden. You know, it'll be cool to see any of them. Now, Raptor, does it bother you at all that they're doing... Essentially, let's call it a tribute episode, because um, it's going to feature a character from Samurai. Obviously, they're going to transform into the Samurai Rangers, and this might be the debut of the Samurai uh, Lion mode, whatever, for the legendary Megazord. But do you find it bothersome at all that they're, you know, like, so early, like, this is the fifth um, fifth episode, that they're doing a tribute to last season's team already? You know... I don't really mind because I'm happy to see any team show back up. Mm -hmm. Tell you what I'd actually prefer would be a legit team up. Team on team. But again, it'll be cool. Well, I'm, my hopes aren't high. I'm just hoping what I would really like to see the most would be if there is indeed a returning samurai ranger mm -hmm. that they borrow their key and participate in a fight yeah and that i i think you know that that would be likely that would be something interesting to be seen I, again i'm just wondering that you know they're talking about again tribute episodes and you know meeting past rangers and they meet a ranger that was just around as opposed to a ranger from 10 15 years ago you know uh that it, it, like what they were doing with gokai or they were doing the most recent shows and it seems that power rangers from what I'm seeing right now, is probably going that route to start out with, that they're doing the most recent shows um, as opposed to anything, say, like Lost Galaxy or in space, because we've looked through this and we haven't seen any mention of space or galaxy or, or anything like that so far. Oh, they get their due. They get their due. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get to that when we get to the, the final episode, basically. Um, yeah. Let's, let's move on to yeah. a confirmed cameo yes so spirit of the tiger where the rangers face a monster with magnetic power to uh take away their weapons and jake and emma turn to a quiet local zookeeper named casey to learn a special form of martial arts that helps them channel their personal animal spirits a lot of things i want to say about this but you go first well um i mean it sounds fun it'll be great to see casey again It'll be cool to see the Megazord use the animal spirits attack. But clearly, it sounds like you have more to say about this than I do. So, let loose. Well, you know, as I've said previous times, I don't like Jungle Fury that much. Casey was one of my worst Red Rangers. Um, but, of course, the, if you don't know the reason why he's obviously in here, is he actually wrote some episodes. Uh, so, it's easy for and him to write himself in. Yeah, and he's actually become... Although not... A lot of fans have disliked Casey, mm -hmm. but they've come to like his actor because not only is has he written some Mega Force ep some Super Mega Force episodes, mm -hmm. he's also a huge fan of Sentai. Yes, and I don't know anything about him as a person, but as a character, it just kind of makes me think, you know, why Casey? Why not RJ? Why not one of the uh, the masters? basically. Uh, heck, why not like Daishi or somebody? Now, obviously, they're going to be locked in with some degree of Sentai footage, but in this case, um, you know, Jan, who plays Geki Red, does not appear morphed in this episode. So you could have gotten any actor that you want, but apparently for simplicity's sake and budget or whatever, they just got the writer they already have on staff. Yeah, the guy they already have on staff, and the guy... And, but yes, I would say that RJ is more popular than the fandom, but again, yeah, Casey's the guy they have around. And, you know, I just wonder, since, you know, the, Casey's actor is writing this episode, I, I'm just wondering how much he's going to, I don't know, Gary stew him up? I, I don't think he would. You know what he could do? A lot of fans had gripes with Casey. Maybe this could be an episode be a chance for the character to redeem himself in the eyes of the fans 
and I would like to see that. I'm always up for bringing past characters back to, like you said, redeem themselves. Again, I've been a big advocate of bringing Justin back in some form. Um, and think of it yeah. like this: he was, you know, that one of his defining characteristics was in Jungle Fury was that he was the rookie. Yep. Now he's going to be in a partial mentor role. And I'd like to see how that shapes out. And I want to like where he, how he ends up as a zookeeper. Cause it just seems to me that I don't think that's where he left off from jungle fury. Cause I thought he was at the Academy teaching. I would have to go back and watch the final episode, but I would like to know how he got to become a zookeeper. Cause that doesn't seem like where he was going to go based on what I remember of jungle fury. Yeah, but, you know, life happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the economy hits everyone, including the Power Rangers. All right. So our next well, episode uh, that we have is a two-parter named Silver Lining. And, of course, this seems obvious that this is the introduction of the Silver Ranger. Uh, part one describes as the Rangers are shocked and mystified when they discover the presence of a new Silver Ranger. Is the stranger is the stranger strange new visitor an ally or a foe? And then part two, Orion, the Silver Ranger, explains his past to Gosei and the Rangers and how he obtained the Silver Ranger key. Um, so a two part to introduce a new Ranger. I I think that's a good idea. Uh, that way you don't throw them in there quickly give you know a full uh you know hour 40 minutes however you want to look at it to uh flesh them out a little bit but i'm a little confused about this ally or foe aspect it kind of tells me orion is not going to be like guy from go uh what do you think well first of all i want to point out the irony here mm -hmm. in go the core team were five aliens and Guy was the Earthling. Yep. And in Super Mega Force, there are five Earthlings, and the Silver Ranger is an alien. Yeah, so or at least it seems like he's an alien, and I'll be fine if he is. Um, it'd be really cool if he was from KO thirty five or one of the established human worlds and Power Rangers, but we'll see. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and there are several worlds and. So yeah, it sounds cool that there's going to be a two-parter. Be nice to give him a little more development. And I will be interested to see if how he gets his Zord in this, because again, guy uh, in a near-death experience, or I guess dying. I forget. I don't exactly know how that turned out. He he got hit by a car. Yeah. And the fact that he met. So in Go Kaiser, yeah. listeners, for those who may be unfamiliar. Guy Ikari, the Silver Ranger, who is a huge fan of Sentai, gets his powers when he attempts to save a little girl who is about to be hit by a car. And it's assumed that he died because he meets three Rangers who are confirmed to be dead. That being Time Fire, um, Abara Killer, and Dragon Ranger. Or and the Quantum him... Ranger, the oh, uh, White Dino Thunder Ranger, and the Green Ranger. Yeah, so they they give him they give him the power of the Ranger Key, the Silver Ranger Key, and also the power of the Gozujin, which has a jet mode, which is similar to the Time Jets. Yep. A T Rex mode, obviously from Zoo Ranger slash Mighty Morphin, mm -hmm. and a human mode, which is. I guess a tribute to. I then again, you know, the human mode has a drill for an arm, and that was a feature on the Dino Thunder Mecha, so yeah. that works. It's the combination of of three different designs, basically, of of dinosaur uh, mechas, basically. Now I'm really interested to know how that's going to be reappropriated. Yeah, because... yeah, because uh, obviously you're not going to get. Eric, Tommy, and Trent to really do a cameo here, or at least nothing's indicated that's the case. Um, and the whole point... Also, none of them died. Yes. Uh, plus, the whole point of the Zord is it's supposed to be powered by three different generations of, of Rangers, basically. So, you know, it seems to me that 
in the tradition that they've been doing recently is they're really ignoring the origins. So we might just get a robot that looks like it, but has real no t- uh, no real ties to the past. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but maybe he. Okay, so we talked about this last night. A theory I had. There was was I think this was a no. There was a casting call, and Sean Johnson, aka Carter Grayson, yes. aka Lightspeed Red, mm-hmm. reported that he had been he had discussed with Saban about voicing <clears throat> a Red Ranger from space, who many Go Kaijera fans assumed would be Aka Red, who was a partner of Captain Marvelous Gokai Red in Gokaiger when they collected the Ranger keys. Now, something I thought was maybe, since the Silver Ranger is going to be from space, maybe he is an al- a friend and ally of this Red Ranger from space, and maybe they have a connection to why Gosei has these powers, this, this power to transform into every single Ranger. Yeah, and it, and it seems, and, and I'll talk about the keys when we get to a, a later episode down the line right here, um, but it seems like, you know, he might have a tie to the powers, to the keys, and so forth. Um, what that is, is, is to be ex- uh, still be explained, but also I will point out that there's been no real confirmation about a Red Ranger from space, and, you know, if they replace Red Ranger from space with Silver Ranger and all that, you know, kind of combine the characters of Gokai Silver with uh, Aka Red and, and all that, um, I would definitely like to... I, I'd, de- I'd really like to know what they're doing because even in these episode tiles, they're just giving us like the bare bones minimum. We still don't really know the full plot and how everything ties in, and that's a little uh, concerning for me too. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I really don't have anything else to say. It's um. Yeah, let's go to the next episode, which. Uh, seems to be a continuation of the Silver Ranger plot called The Power of Six, which I believe um, is... Uh, oh, it, me- it has several different meanings. What's that called? <laughs> uh, Power of Six? Yeah, the next episode. Um, when- I, don't know the- I don't know the meaning here. Uh, well, I mean, okay, so Power of Six, obviously, they got six rangers now, and the Silver Ranger uses the sixth ranger powers, basically. Because this, uh, according to the description, when the rangers, uh, when the ranger teammates are sidelined by an energy-struck monster, or energy-sucking monster, Jake must put aside his uh, jealousy of Orion and help him use the combined power of the past six rangers to defeat this terrible foe. So that, to me, sounds like he's going to use the gold mode uh, and use the six ranger powers. Yeah, which sounds like a pretty direct copy of the episode of Gokai, the corresponding episode of Gokaiger, um, which was episode 19, in which, yeah, Don Gokai Green is jealous of Gokai Silver because yep. he's awesome and everybody likes him. <laughs> And it seems logical that this would go to Jake. And this is the first time we've actually got, like, other than Noah, a direct character story, um, which I like. Um, and it does seem to fit what's previously been established with Jake. Yeah, he is an attention-seeking personality. And, you know, maybe maybe Orion has some moments with... Um, wow, I'm... I'm Maybe what happens is that uh, Orion... Gia, Gia, Gia yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe Orion and Gia have some moments and that gets him mad. Yeah, and it, and it might just be that. It might just be him and Gia having a relationship and then that's when he gets uh, really jealous. Yeah, so... I, well... You know, I'm going to be excited to see the Six Ranger suits in action. Yeah, and I really hope they do something... With his character, because as I've stated before, I'm not a big fan of the Mega Force characters, um, other than Jake. So I hope they give him a strong personality, and it's a real good actor that they got. Because I don't know anything about the actor that they did cast. Um, I, I just hope he's good. Okay, I'm going to pause this going down the line thing for a moment to express a disappointment that I've just realized from looking at these episodes. Okay, these go ahead. Go ahead. No Bosco, or American equivalent. 
Yeah, there does not seem to be that that plot line doesn't seem to be in here. But also keep in mind, and I'm not, yeah, and yeah, I know the shorter runtime, so it, it's probably for the best to have you know to cut a character. But the fact is that they're cutting that really cool Sentai footage of the Rangers fighting the fighting the um, the I call them trumpet clones. Oh, yes, yes, the the club. Well, they could still utilize that, but it sounds to me like that would be something more of like a final thing or something they would use to the end. And as opposed maybe, to, yeah. And maybe that's going to be worked into the Silver Lining two parter. Yeah, po- uh, possibly where, you know, they get the, that's how they obtain the Sixth Ranger powers because I, I don't recall seeing Sixth Ranger keys in uh, the command center. Uh, it's only like the main five, so yeah. maybe Gosei doesn't have them, and that's where they come from. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe he even assists in that fight. Yeah, very, very much so. Yeah, so we could still have that fight. You know, even though Bosco is one of my favorite Gokaiju characters, one of my favorite Sentai characters, it's probably for the best that he that they're not putting another character in with the shorter runtime. And I really hope that they do use the Ranger key clones in some way. And I'm just going to miss Sally, because I'd like to see Sally. Yeah, I thought it was just <laughs> really cool to see the Gokaijers fighting against the clones of the past Rangers. Oh, yeah, and, and that's going to be really good, because especially when Bosco shows up with all the sixth Ranger keys, uh, that was awesome. I, I, that was like one of the highlights uh, of the action sequences, I think. Yeah, so I'm hoping that gets utilized. But, you know, that that aside, let's move forward. Okay. Now, the next episode, this one's kind of curious. Uh, the episode's titled The Perfect Storm. Uh, the Rangers are sidetracked from a fight uh, against an invading monster when Tensu is struck by lightning, develops amnesia, and wanders from the command center. Now, that certainly sounds like a Season 1 Power Ranger plot, if I ever heard one. Yeah. And, okay, so they call it the perfect storm. And as Lavender Ranger points out, and, you know, we should really link to this when you post it. Yeah. But anyways, so Lavender Ranger points out the rather obvious, and I'm, I should have thought of this too, but storm in the title. Yeah. What does that bring to mind? Ninja Storm, Ranger Form. <laughs> yeah, so... I I mean really nothing comes to mind when I look at this with this description of a plot. I mean it sounds I mean, like something that Alpha would have got himself into. I mean there were a couple of episodes where Alpha left the command center, the one with uh the Primitar where he left and helped the little boy. I mean it sounds all very reminiscent um of that. The only thing to note is that Lavender Ranger assumes that this will be the introduction of the Ninja Storm Zord uh, into the series. Uh, But two things to actually mention about that, if this is indeed going to be a Ninja Storm tribute. First, the Zord in Hurricane Jer that uh, that it's based off of was actually like a living personality as far as I understand. Yeah, Furimanu. Yeah. And he comes back in Gokaiger with a personality. He talks, you know, has free will and stuff like that. Uh, that was never established in Ninja Storm other than it could talk. Uh, that was about it. So the significance of bringing this thing back that had absolutely no significance in Ninja Storm is really odd to me. And second... I think it'll be... I think it'll be glossed over. I think it'll just show up, yeah. launch its attacks, or show up and yeah. show up and fuse. Yeah, uh, but but my, my bigger concern is when the Hurricane just showed up in the um, two-parter, it was basically a crossover between Gokaiger and Ninja Storm because the three Hurricane Rangers got their powers back and they fought along with the Gokaiger, uh, and it was a really good episode. But it does not seem likely that we're having any of the teens from Ninja Storm show up uh, to do anything like that. And, you know, it's entirely possible that they'll use the go kiter footage of them teaming up with the Hurricangers and then do what they did in Clash of the Red Rangers. And you know, maybe the 
the hurricane, the Ninja Storm Rangers show up in voiceover only, and maybe they don't even maybe they don't even get the original actors back, which would be a shame. But despite the fact they were in New Zealand as well, and so yeah, you know. Yeah, it, it, it just seems to me that this is going to be a really <clears throat> dodgy episode. Um, because, also keep in mind, the focus is obviously on Tensu uh, from the episode description. So that's only going to take it so far. Um, and I'm just wondering where it's going to go. Because it, it just, that, that episode particularly seems dead on arrival right there. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like there's so much better Gokaiger episodes that you could copy. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go that route. Now, the next episode also seems a little bit odd, but this is taken from a Go Kaiju plot. Um, love is in the air. When a love potion accidentally makes the evil Lerville fall in love Levita. with Levita, fall in love with Jake, a jealous alien targets him for destruction. Uh, so this was obviously based off of a Go Kaiju episode where Insarn had a love interest from the home world. Um... And in, I'm trying to remember the specifics of that episode. Do you remember anything specific? Oh, yeah, about? this is one of my favorite episodes of Gokaiger. Okay. Kaiser. What happened was Insarn was looking at Earth, and she saw Red Racer, who was the Red Car Ranger. Mm -hmm. Car Ranger is the basis for Turbo. Yep. And for those of you who don't know, Car Ranger was a comedic Sentai. Yeah. And... It was, in the episode, it's just hilarious. It takes a very silly tone compared to the rest of Gokaiger, and she fell in love with him on her own, on her own free will. There was no love potion. She saw, she looked at Earth, saw him, and she fell in love. And so she sent Zalusto, or as most people think, it's just supposed to be, his name's supposed to be Jealous. They sent Zalusto down to earth to capture him to take him back to the Gok take him back to the Zangiak ship so she could love him whatever yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like this will be a comedic episode and that they'll probably have you know they'll probably use the Zelisto suit and he'll be trying to kidnap Jake <laughs> and, and of course the question would be is obviously they use the car ranger suits so i wonder if this would be i guess a, a turbo episode but then yet you have to wonder you know how does it tie into turbo or do they just simply use the turbo suits? i think it won't be a turbo tribute i simply think that they'll use the turbo suits in the episode mm -hmm. but that'll be the extent of it Probably so. This seems like a pretty generic episode. It, it does now I, again. We don't know what the overall plot of the series is going to be, other than to defeat the Armada. So I don't know if this will be a serialized uh, series or if it is just one episode adventures at a time. Which this doesn't seem like the season to do that. But given this episode and the previous episode, it seems that's kind of what they're doing. Yeah. Um, let's look at the next episode here, uh, United as One. When the Megazord is damaged in a fight against a monster who uses himself to steal humans' happiness, Emma uses unconventional methods to defeat this unusual monster. Now, that episode does not seem like anything, uh, to be honest. Uh, it, it just seems like a generic episode that could be used in any season. Well... According to Lavender Ranger, mm -hmm. he thinks... Alright, so he posted a picture from filming the episode, which shows that it is the episode 29 of Go Kaiser, which was the episode that was an Abba Ranger tribute. Yes. And that was the episode that Gokai Pink became Abari Pink. And did absolutely nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so it's also worth worth pointing out that Abari Pink was not in Dino Thunder at all. Exactly. So 
it seems to me this is just going to... Obviously, there's a... Uh, I mean, what unconventional method is, is what I'm curious about um, to defeat the monster. And I, it's been a while since I'd seen this particular episode, so I'm not recalling a lot of the details um, in it. But, it, again, this just sounds like another generic episode as opposed to anything significant to the overall plot. Yeah, but... You know, whatever. Well, we don't have much to go ahead and say on that. Let, let's go on to the next episode here, which has the dumbest title I've ever heard. Um, the grass is always greener or bluer, which I would like to think is a reference to Kentucky, but um, not the case. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, Jake and Noah find <laughs> themselves literally standing in each other's shoes when a body-swapping monster named uh, Trans Fencer? Facer? How do you pronounce that? Uh, well, this is the case name, Transfer. Okay, switches the two rangers so that they're inhabiting each other's bodies. Now, Raptor, this is exactly like an episode uh, from Gokiger when... 27, yeah. Yeah, uh, when Luca and Don switch bodies, which is a very good episode. I like that. It's very comical. But you know what? It, it seems that they intentionally changed it to two male characters here. Um, because the big... And- the biggest issue when Billy and Kimberly did it in this first season was it opens up all those questions of... Because you notice it takes place over several days, that the, the first episode where Billy and Kimberly switch. So it opens up the questions of, are they seeing each other naked, basically, and all those things that you really shouldn't be thinking about. So they obviously switch it to two dudes, so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. So I'm wondering, you know, what's the... You know, what's going to be the you know, what's going to be the big conflict of that? Because face it, Noah and Jake are not that different. Yeah, and they're than, and they're already established as friends. Was. Yeah, so because the whole thing with Luca and Don is that they were polar opposites from each other, and there was a whole thing where she was uh, playing Don as this suave, cool kind of guy, and then you know Don was like, you know, Luca, but without the confidence, and was like afraid of every man that he ran into, basically. Um, and maybe that, maybe that'll be used. Maybe there'll be some stuff going on in, a, in the school scenes. And the unmorph scenes that deal with that. Yeah, I mean, it, but it doesn't it, it's not even like with Billy and Kimberly because, of course, Billy and Kimberly were the polar opposites to each other, and of course, you know, like Billy couldn't figure out how to put on girls' makeup, and Kimberly didn't know how to work a computer and stuff. So I mean, <laughs> you, you can you can play up that comedy, but again, for two characters who already like each other, who are not that dissimilar from each other, I mean, the only thing you can play up is that Jake is athletic and Noah is not, which also makes no sense because they're Power Rangers. Um, I, I just, I do, I am really curious as to where the conflict is going to come from that. And I don't know, it, it just doesn't seem as interesting as what they did 20 years ago, basically. Yeah, but whatever. Now let's get to the next episode, oh, which yes. has me excited. Well, it has yes. it has a lot of concerns for me. Okay, so the episode called "In the Driver's Seat," lured away from Earth to investigate an emergency signal from Corinth, the Rangers discover they've been trapped in alternate dimension by Professor Cog, who attacks Earth in their absence. Their only hope to get back home lies with the wild Turbo Falcon Zord, um, who they must tame in order to return to their dimension and save Earth. Now, Raptor, I'm going to let you go first because I have a million things to say about this episode. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I'm excited to to get for them to go to the RPM dimension. I know, you know, ever for those of you who may be listening for the first time, Barkeep is not a fan of RPM. However, it is my favorite Power Rangers series. And I will point out, my my concerns has nothing to do with the fact that it's an RPM. Uh, let, me, let me continue. Okay, me continue. okay, okay. Um, I'm a bit disappointed that it's Professor Cog who's doing it. I realize that that's going off of the Sentai footage, but Professor Cog was never utilized in RPM. So it's a bit disappointing to have this character who, yes, he did show up in Clash of the Red Rangers, but I would have preferred... I would have preferred a, another one of the Vengex villains... But whatever. Uh, 
Uh, there's also been a rumor that Dr. K's actress is going to show up, so I'll, I'll be glad because I like Dr. K. She's one of my favorite characters. So, I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see it, but please, Barkeep, I know you have issues. Let them out. Okay, again, let me clarify. This has nothing to do with the fact that it's an RPM episode, and I think the whole Dr. K thing will work because they need somebody from that dimension to explain what's going on. Obviously, an uh, established character would help, and it will also help us determine where it is in continuity because uh, it's from Korineth, but is this Korineth during the Vingix days uh, or after the Vingix days? So that all that needs to be settled out. Um, well... Okay, I'll, I'll let you continue, but then I'll, 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 I'll mention the timing thing. Please, proceed. Okay. My biggest concern is, is that they're going to an alternate dimension. Now, my question is, I understand Professor Cog's trying to lure them there. But why is, is the first question we have. And two, why are the Rangers leaving Earth defenseless with a, a space armada at their front door to go to this universe. And then three, why exactly this universe? Because that's my, that's my biggest concern about RPM when we put into the context that it's not a future series, that is uh, another dimension, alternate dimension. Uh, why do we necessarily care about this, this dimension, basically? I know we focused the whole season on it and we followed those characters, but what does it mean in the grand scheme of things for the Power Rangers universe? And that's why I want the episode to address. Okay. But it seems that this episode is basically going to go ahead and just say, we got to get a new Zord, so we're going to go there. It is what this episode seems to be doing, as opposed to why should we care about the RPM universe when it does not fit in with any other Power Rangers series? Okay, so... I've got I'll I'll address those things because I've I've got explanations for those. This is just guessing. We'll see what happens, but yeah. First of all, the continuity issue. So Clash of the Rangers, Red Rangers establishes that <clears throat> Samurai and RPM take place concurrently. Yes. That the Samurai Rangers are fighting against. Wow, what's his name? I forget. Per, um. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Xandrid. Xandrid. Xandrid, yeah. Yeah. The, the Samurai Rangers are fighting Xandrid while the RPM Rangers are fighting Vengex. Because it, everything was... They're clearly in power. So my guess is that continuity-wise, it takes place after. And so we can just assume that Cog was a survivor of the fall of Vengex. And that maybe you know maybe he struck up a deal with the Armada in the same way that he struck up a deal with Xandrid. Okay. In that maybe he was promised maybe he was promised a he was promised a some maybe some support in exchange for trapping the rangers in the alternate dimension. Maybe once maybe the deal is going to be that once the armada takes over earth that they'll send him some forces to help him take over his earth. Now, now that seems logical. I will go ahead and grant you, but and it's simple too. It's yeah, not, it's it's, it's simple. Over. But it would just be again to my point why the RPM universe. It would be coincidence but, okay, upon coincidence. Yeah, all right, all right. You know, I'll I'll address that. Okay. Gose is clearly in the know on what's going on with the Ranger teams. Yes. Which is why he has the Ranger keys. Yes. So, it's it's probably assumed that he's aware of what happens with when Scott traveled, you know, RPM Red traveled to the main universe to assist the Samurai Rangers. So they're aware of their significance, and they've helped out. So maybe, maybe Gose is the one who receives the message, and he says, you know, hey, you need to help these guys. You know, 
So if Gosei knows what happened in Clash of the Red Rangers, then he would know that they, these people should be helped. But let me ask this question of you, and, and this really has more to do with, I guess, the RPM keys uh, than the particular episode, but I do want to bring this point up, is that obviously we know the SPD is in the future, so he got the keys from SPD in the future. He got the RPM keys from their dimension, if we assume they, they function the same way, that they're actually their powers and, and so forth. So why in the 2013, 2014 and all that would Gosei have only one set of keys from the future and only one set of keys from the past? And let me correct myself. Time Force, that's from future. So only two time, future time uh, Power Ranger teams and only one from another universe. Just because they're the ones that we follow on the show does not necessarily mean that Gosei the would or should existence. have them. Okay, so, first of all, there's not going to be an explanation. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I could probably think of an explanation, but it would just sound overly technical and complicated and fan wanky. I mean, you would think the Legend War or the Mega War would be the explanation because then, you know, because that was the explanation of Go They were all together. They used their powers. That would explain why those teams were there. Um, however, even if you did that here in Power Rangers, there would still be the question of why did the SPD Rangers travel from the past? Why did Time Force travel from the past? Why did somebody from their dimension travel? You know, stuff like that. But okay, I, I understand you, your point. Do you want to hear my little fan wanky theory? All right, go ahead. Sound like an Uber nerd here, but you know whatever. Okay. My theory is that since my theory is that since all of these Rangers are connected to the Morphin Grid, we accept that. Yep. Right. And even though there will be future, and I believe that the that the Morphin Grid is multiversal. I would agree so, with that. Yes. Which is why Rangers can still morph when they go into other dimensions and why the RPM Rangers can morph. So, maybe Gosei is tapped into the morphing grid, which is how he's aware of all these teams, despite the fact that he was sleeping until the War Star arrived. Mm -hmm. So, maybe he is only aware of teams that have accessed the morphing grid within his within his dimension and point in the timeline. So, every single, other than, other than the five RPM Rangers, or other than, other than the RPM Rangers, my Scott, all of the Rangers, even the two future teams, have accessed their powers within Gosei's home dimension and Gosei's home timeline. Even the SPD Rangers. I mean, it's possible and all that. I mean, and that's that would not be in the show because it's way too complicated. You know, the Time I, Force Rangers came from the future and accessed their powers and accessed the Morphing Grid within Gosei's timeline. The SPD Rangers went back in time and accessed their powers within Gosei's timeline. And Scott accessed his powers within Gosei's dimension. And so maybe the fact that Scott accessed his powers gave Gosei morphing grid access to the other RPM powers which are based on the same technology as Scott's and therefore are assumed to be the same connection to the morphing grid. And oh my god, I have outdone myself. I believe you have. So I'll tell you what, there are just so many issues that this episode raises, I don't think any of them are actually going to be explained, and if they are explained, it's not going to be in a uh, satisfying way. So I think for right now, let, let's kind of leave that on the burner and let's see what happens uh, basically a year from now when that episode premieres, um, and we can go over those at that time. But I want to get into the... But, yeah, but oh, before, we, before yeah. we go off of that, I hope the rumor about Dr. K is true. And otherwise, it'll be good to see. It'll be good to see them use the RPM powers. It'll be good to see them fight against grinders, and it'll be cool to 
see Mock Alkin again in the American footage. Or the Turbo Falcon Zord, as he's called now. Yeah, which... That that actually does sound like a Mighty Morphin name for a Zord. Uh, and it's a lot better than some of the other names that, that, that we've well, had I mean, recently. <laughs> Turbo Falcon sounds similar to the names of the Zords in RPM, so it works. Yeah. Because, you know, you had the Bear Crawler, and what were the other ones named? Uh, the Tail Spinner. It sounds like those things. Turbo Falcon, that sounds like... And, you know, it's maybe it's possible that that's a new invention by Dr. K, which would be a further justification for her cameo. Absolutely, but of course, uh, you know, just to fight, I, I guess, against Professor Cog, and if it has anything to do with the Gokai or Goangers, that this is derived from both the powers of the Red Ranger and the Yellow Ranger... It, they would I have, think that would be. I don't think that would be mentioned. I think that would simply be. But, she, I think she'd just say, "It's a new invention I made." Yeah, but I'm just saying that, that would open up the can of worms about Vengex hiding out in the Red Ranger Morpher. So. Yeah, I think that'll be swept under the rug. Yeah, well, the final episode we're going to go ahead and discuss um, is. But before we do that, oh yeah, it's worth mentioning that. This list is incomplete. It's been confirmed yes. that Super Mega Force will run for 25, or not 20, 20, 20. 20 episodes, and we only have 15 descriptions. Yes. Plus the fact that we know that episode 20 will be called Legendary Battle. And, so mm -hmm. there are four unaccounted for. Absolutely. And in this episode, which will be episode 15, uh, All Hail Prince Varric. Is that how you say his Vicar. name? Okay. Uh, the Rangers finally bow the evil prince face to face when he comes to Earth armed with his very own Megazord, um, which is a, another Gokaiger plot. Uh, where yep, taken from episode 37, the strongest fighting machine, and episode 38, the power to seize dreams. The only reason I know those episode titles is because those are my two favorite episodes of Gokaiger. Really, I thought the episode fifth, uh, 49 and 50 were your favorites. Nope. It, they're my favorites, which is strange because one of the reasons I liked Gokaiger so much was because of the ranger changes, mm -hmm. but, and there are none in that episode, mm. in those two episodes. It was, to me, it was the best moments for those characters. I see. And I simply love the episode title, The Power to Seize Dreams. And yeah. the fact that that was the Gokaiger's greater power. That was the lesson that they had to teach to the world. Absolutely. Now, the question is, will any of that, besides the Megazord, bat Megazord battle, uh, actually translate over? It Maybe there'll be something about... Uh, maybe they'll be, it'll be wired down into believing in yourself. You know, maybe it'll be, you know, the Rangers will be on the ropes, and they'll be like, ah, it's so bad, but somewhat... Someone, probably Troy, will say, No, guys, we got to believe in ourselves. And that's what will unlock the power to fuse all the mechas. Or at least a good chunk of them. Yeah, and I should probably explain this. In this episode in Gokaiger, Prince Warsgill receives a present from his father, which is a super strong mecha. He goes down to Earth fights the Gokaijers, trashes their mech their mechas, but the Gokaijers unlock their own greater power, which allows them to fuse Gokaio, which is the legendary Megazord, the Silver Ranger's Zord, and the Red, or in the Turbo Falcon Zord, into Kanzen Gokaio. So this is probably going to be the legendary Ultra Zord. Preliminary guess. Yeah, I mean, they would probably go with that name as long as they don't go with Gingazord. Uh, Gingazord. You know, yeah. they might, because they used it for Samurai. Chances yeah. are they could use it again. Yeah, and I hope that's not the case. Um, I mean, obviously this is not going to be, uh, again, the final episode. We'll still have four more episodes uh, to count down to the final episode. But uh, if I recall, go Kedger, this was the Prince's last appearance because uh, he died in that battle. Is that correct? Yes, he died in that battle, but it's entirely possible that 
he can A, not die, and they'll use American footage to fill in the blanks. Mm-hmm. Or, alright, I'm going to spoil you here, because I know you haven't finished Megaforce, yeah. but for the sake of the discussion here, Vrock survived the final battle of Megaforce. I kind of suspected that, so I'm almost wondering if it'd be like a tag team brother thing, which would be part of the final episode. Well, in the episode, it indicated that he was not on good terms with the rest of his family. I see. Because he did, he did not join the Armada when they appeared. Okay. He went into hiding. So, it's entirely possible that, that the prince could die in this battle. And... Or gets destroyed. But and his brother of, takes over. Yeah, instead of his father, his brother takes over. Which would be cool. It'd be cool to see Brock show back up and assume command. Because he was that's the kind of treacherous character he was established to be in Megaforce. Now, I'm looking back through the episodes. Didn't we have a reference to the Emperor or a Emperor in any of these episodes? Because I thought I'd seen Okay, one. I'm looking at the list. And yes, there is. Which episode is that? Um, okay, the Samurai Surprise. It says Matacor is sent by the Emperor. I think that's just an error on the descriptor's part. I think that it's not the Emperor who sends that monster, but the Prince. Okay. So. If they do follow the plot of Gokaiger, then yes, the prince would probably die, and so it would either be the emperor take over, because he, this character is established to be a prince. Yes. He's not Emperor Vikar, he's the prince. So, maybe the emperor comes in, maybe Vrock steps back in. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, the best thing about doing all this is that there is so much speculation, particularly because we don't know the true context of the series. Because it, it seems to me that they are taking a mixture of Gokaiger, but they're not doing everything. Like you said, there's no Bosco. Apparently there's no um, Akared uh, counterpart. Uh, they've gotten rid of the space pirate thing. They're obviously not looking for any treasure. So all well, those elements well, are out. Before you go into that, there's one more thing we need, one more episode we need to talk about. A lot of people already know about this, but it's worth talking. Oh yes. The last episode is the legendary battle. Yeah, I didn't think we need to mention anything about it since it's so well known. But it seems to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but it looks like this episode just going to be 30 minutes of straight fighting. I am okay with that. Well, I almost think that. If as long as we have some character moments, I'm okay with it. I, I'm just thinking that if you're going to do... This should be like an hour-long episode, I think. Yeah, two-parter. And um, who knows, not, maybe it is. Yeah, and I am hope that it is because it seems to me that for an episode that is the culmination of 20 years, or is supposed to be the culmination of 20 years, I think you should spend half on story and half on fighting. Um, I don't think we're going to necessarily get that balance from what Jason Frank and the others have described. It, it, they, I mean, they were there for three days filming. So it doesn't seem like they filmed anything substantial as far as uh, characters or potentially dialogue. I mean, who knows? I don't know how many days they were working. Maybe they are working 16-hour days. But it, it just seems to me that from what I can tell, this is going to be mainly uh, action-oriented. Might be little plot, if any. And then, of course, we have to tie up uh, basically two years' worth of stories uh, from Megaforce to Super Megaforce. And that, yes. and that seems like a tall order. Yeah, and... Oh, another cool thing about the episode, it is confirmed to be directed by... Oh, by Sakamoto. Fuichi Sakamoto. Yes. Who was the stunt director for much of the Disney era, and is also currently directing Kyo Ryuji. Yes, and I have to admit, the stunts in that are very good. I mean, a lot of wire work and very practical. And good energy to the show, too. Yes. And maybe... And you can probably look at some of Barkeep's other mentions on 
his other podcast on Kyo Ryuger, if you'd like. I didn't participate, and maybe we can get them back online, but it's a good series. It took me a while to get into it at first, but I've gotten to enjoy it. But And I think the anyways. important thing is that they, uh, they got a director who obviously is competent in action. I would just worry about, again, and story. And he's a long... He's a... He's been with the franchise for a long time. Yeah, I mean, because like... He, he was a stunt man before he was a stunt coordinator. A- absolutely. I mean, it's kind of like saying, you know, there's a new Friday the 13th movie come out and Peter Jackson is the director. Somebody with a good track record of gore and violence, and you can trust in that. And I kind of trust in this director based on, you know, what, what we have here. And that's a really good way of putting it. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, you know, Raptor, we have talked a long time on this, and no doubt this is at least a minimum of eight parts uh, on the tavern, so... Um, well, first of all, since we're doing it on this... Since we're doing it on the Hero Taku channel now, we don't have to worry about those parts. Uh, that That's true, that's true. Um, so it's great yeah. to have to be able to do a full-length episode without having to pause. I've really enjoyed that. It lets us just flow. Hey, at, le- at least you haven't had to edit. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to do much editing on this. So, yeah. anyway, any, any final thoughts on this, Barkeep, just based on what we've read, what we've discussed? My very first episode of The Tavern was about my concerns about honoring the 20 years of Power Rangers within the Mega Force and Super Mega Force seasons. So far, I am... I feel the same way then as I do now, or feel, feel the same way now as I did then. And I'm just... I'm really hoping they surprise us. I'm hoping that they decide to make Mega Force so mediocre that by the time Super Mega Force comes around, we're just so blown away by the amazing things that they did. But even with these episode titles, even with this speculation and the things that we know, I'm still really concerned about them rushing things, not explaining things, and glossing over uh, important things. Because again, like, like I've said before, my biggest problem with Gokaiger was that they were focusing a lot on the gimmick, which was the transformations. Granted, they did have a good story, but they also had 50 episodes to work that out. Right, you know, I would, I personally think that Gokaiger had a great balance of being an anniversary series, but also with the in, with the new characters. Yes, uh, but right, I, I don't. Had the, they I don't, had fifty two episodes to work with. But I don't think the Super Mega Force has that luxury. So something's going to be sacrificed, and it's either going to be the Mega Force characters, which will be a disservice to them. Or it's going to be the anniversary uh, plot lines, which will be a disservice to that. So I'm hoping they find a good balance to appease both the Mega Force fan base and the Mega Force characters, and then the 20 years of history that they built up. Because let's be honest, Power Rangers has made a great deal, or Saban Brands has made a big deal about this being the 20th anniversary, but they really haven't done anything other than the Legacy Collection to. Um, what what would I think of here? To to really, hey guys, it's the twentieth anniversary. Because heck, when Star Trek had its thirtieth anniversary, they rented out like the Apollo or someplace and did a three hour television broadcast with cameos of people and tons of stuff. I mean, heck, I don't think we're gonna get anything like that. But, geez, let's you know show some enthusiasm. Yeah. So, I admit. Mean, from the sounds of things, sounds like that enthusiasm has been st- stuffed into the legendary battle. I'm really hoping that the legendary battle is a two-parter. Yeah, or at least an hour-long episode. I mean, heck, be great for the first time ever in Power Rangers history, an hour-long episode. Yeah, and but we'll see. We'll yeah. see how it goes. I'm. I, I, I'm feeling. I think I'm a little more optimistic than you are, but maybe that's just because my standards are getting lowered. But <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be happy to see all of the. I'm gonna be happy to see the old Zords that show up to become legendary Megazord upgrades. I'm gonna be happy to see the old powers again. I'm gonna be happy to see the characters again. 
And really, that I'm addressing one of your concerns that it's going to be too focused on the old things because everything I mentioned is the old stuff. Yeah, and and I am hoping because it doesn't sound like again in these descriptions that they're focusing on the Mighty Morphin, the Zia, the Turbo, the Alien. Uh, the, the, a lot of those a errors are not being that focused on. But again, I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope that's the missing Other than, four episodes. But I'm going to point this out. Other than other than the fact that, yeah, Zio doesn't seem like it's getting a specific tribute, although there's that weird thing in the toy line. Yeah. But the free Disney shows are getting more attention in the Legendary Battle. We know that because mm -hmm. the rangers that show up are all, other than, other than the two samurai rangers that show up, they're all pre-Disney era rangers. We have Tommy, we have TJ and Cassie, we have the lights. We, we have the the two light speed rangers. We have Carter three galaxy. Yeah, we have the three galaxy rangers, which I thought was appall. All right, first of all, I thought that was appalling. I thought. Why are they having three from a single season? But whatever, you know we. Have, hey, it's whoever well, showed up to the evite. Remember? <laughs> well, they remember how they had to disinvite people that said they would go. Yeah. But anyways, so they're getting a lot of attention. And, you know, we also have we also have Wes from Time Force showing up. Yep. I mean, again, they're showing up, but it doesn't seem like a lot's going to be focusing on them. I guess that would be the, the, the thing I'm trying to bring up because uh, we have all these Disney seasons. We have the Neo, the new Saban, the Neo Saban era and it seems the only lip service they're giving to uh, the original Saban era would seem to be um, the, the final episode. But again, that's just from the information we have right now. It, it, again, it's just kind of like when Gokai just started, they only wanted to do the most recent 10, uh, 10 15 years in the series. Um, they didn't really want anything to do with like Go Ranger or Mask Man or anything like that, but they eventually did it because it, the Giga Man episode proved so successful. Um, they're not gonna, we're yeah. not gonna have that luxury here because everything's pretty much filmed, everything's locked. Um, so no, which is kind of a problem with Power Rangers, I would say, is that we won't have time to react and modify the series, I guess, based on audience reaction. So. Yeah, when it comes to anniversaries in Sentai, it tends to be the last 15 years plus Jetman. That's how it always goes. Yes. Well, Raptor, I, I think we've kind of gone on for a bit right here. I, I'm afraid we're getting a little off topic, but, you know, I want to thank you for, for trying this uh, Skype thing here with me. And I apologize to all you guys out there. This is the first time uh, we've tried this, so I apologize for the audio issues uh, that we're having. Uh, but, Raptor, you'll be back later this week, and we could probably do more uh, in-person videos, right? Yeah, I'll be back in on the third, so we can do more in-person videos. And yeah, I apologize for my audio. You'll you can definitely hear the difference in it. But yeah, I apologize for my audio. I really I really wanted to get something I really wanted to get something up just because we hadn't done anything for a while. So yeah, I apologize for the issues. But it's good to be recorded again. Absolutely. And Raptor, I, I want to thank you for joining me here today. All you guys, I want to thank you all for listening. Uh, have a good evening, and the tavern is now closed.